Good morning, good morning. Coach already here. <coughs> you know, uh, today uh, I want to talk about challenges of life. I don't know what you're going through, but you know, the last three days have been some of the most difficult time in my life, you know. Recently, my, the young men, my boys, you know, came from school and, um, you know, so school writes a letter, they tell you that uh, you have to bring them back and pay the entire school fee. And then I went back, some money I was expecting it did not go through. And uh, also because of financial challenges, you know, up to date, you know, the, the salaries of my organization have not been paid. And uh, you look at that, then uh, at the somewhere, I know, la the other night, all I had was about 87 shillings, you know. And uh, amazingly enough, uh, a brother calls around uh, 9 o'clock in the night, 9 p.m., and he had no food. They had nothing. So what I do, I send him the 80 shillings that he made with the 7 shillings. And the following day, I also had a guest who had come to visit. So the guest came and the food that we had that the boys left cleared. I needed to write a letter to school to explain to them, you know, why they need to allow me to just let the boys, you know, study. And thereafter, I will look for how to pay, which the school was graciously enough to allow me because I've never defaulted, you know, from paying the school fee. And, and you look at that and you're like, wow, God, what is happening? You know, at the same time, even in my profession, you know, I'm a professional life coach, you know, Bible-based, board-certified master health, mental health. But even that, you know, the way you feel like my potential, you know, being used. And so what happened, I've also been writing a book and the book also as well just hit a snag why because you realize quickly to uh, write the book to edit the book editing alone needs money yeah, you know uh, and all that and i really i don't have money and so i have this group that i do life coaching with as well and so you know the way the spirit tells you maybe if i tell them i tell i send to my friends you know they will support towards that cause and you're sending that and nothing happened you're like god what is happening was that the spirit talking to me or you know was it self desire and then when you finish quickly you open and you sober up then you look at the avenues so being a minister and working for the church is it helping what do i do you know and so this morning as i was walking because i've been troubled i'm walking and i'm praying god what is it now i recently did a class on on freedom in christ you know the way christ fought our battles and and then 2000 years ago he, he gained freedom for us and that class i posted you know and, and i told the people the only way for us to fight addiction the only way for us to be able to find the freedom is by surrendering surrendering to jesus then i realized i wasn't surrendered man it is so hard when you're going through a situation the flesh has a tendency of wanting to take over so that my flesh has been fighting my flesh has been fighting. Maybe my employment, you know, is, is not what I need to be in. Maybe I need to look for another employment. A and you start thinking many things. I've had discussions upon discussions, you know, with the devil. And you wonder, why am I recording this? I love recording my experience. So that if there's anything that you can learn from it, you learn from it. If I overcome, I have not. You know, I'm still in the same place. But as I was praying in the morning, I had to go back. And quickly the Spirit reminded me, Charles, you have been teaching about freedom. How come to yourself you are not free? You feel like you're in bondage. The devil has held you captive. The things you're asking God are not going through. You know, and you have a lot of questions. You know, due to the financial crunch or problem in the country, in the nations, it's even affecting the churches, our church as well, you know, employer. And so you look, you're like, man, come on. Are we going to have our jobs anymore? What is a job security? And so then quickly attempted. I have my therapist as well who I speak with. And I spoke with him. And he told me, let's pray together. So we pray. I spoke with my wife who's my number one therapist. My wife said, honey, let's pray together. Yesterday I took a time of fasting and praying for God to reveal to me what is it exactly. You know, yesterday I didn't even have money, neither food. A brother just uh, listened to what I was going through and told me, bro, I've sent you 1,000. Go buy some food. And I bought food. 
You know, God works in amazing ways. I gave 80 shillings the other day. Yesterday, I got, you know, that money and I got food. And, I, you know, of course, another sister says, man, Charles, I don't have what to eat tonight. And when I got food, I also went did a little bit of shopping for her. And that is how I got food, which I had to, which I have to eat. You understand? You know, so I spoke to my wife who has gone for prayer retreat to come back over, to come together so we can be able to figure out what we can do. But that is life. So this morning as I was walking, I started thinking. What is it? I've talked about freedom. What is it? Then I started narrowing down. Is it about the job? Is it about my employer? Is it about the people? Because even yesterday, my mom was very sick. My mom fell ill and she needed to be rushed to the hospital. Luckily enough, my wife was up country. She's been there for the last about like two weeks, praying, taking time to pray. And so quickly I called my wife and my wife rushes, takes her with the little money she had, took her to the hospital and she was admitted. Now, the insurance cover that she had also was depleted. I didn't have money. So quickly, I had to look for how to get money, which I got paid for the insurance. I also need to cover for my wife to come back. And so you look at all that. These things can easily bring anxiety. So I had to ask myself, going back to the morning, why is my peace stolen? How can I restore this peace? And so I had to go through a myriad. I've actually taken the time to journal my life, some of the things that are bringing me concern. And among which are, you know, we have a ministry. I've been in the full-time ministry for the longest time possible. And currently, as I did my mental health life coaching, I've really desired to be able to impart this wisdom to many people. And I'm like, so I had to ask myself, how do I do this? And quickly, the Spirit of the Lord came to me, looking at Jesus Christ going to the synagogue to preach the gospel. He was not accepted. The apostles were not accepting him as well. But look at Jesus. He says that I came to seek that which was lost. Then I realized it is until we reach a moment when we feel like we are patient that the time we seek help. And I'm like, why do I get these lost people? And when I was going through the list, we have people in prisons who desire to be preached to, to be encouraged with the word of God. We have people in hospitals who no one goes to because pastors are busy preaching in the pulpit. Why don't I start that ministry? We are, and so quickly, what about people who have been put in jail and at that Sunday they are there for the entire weekend. They have no one to encourage them. I'm like, there are people who need encouragement. You look what the Spirit quickly told me. Charles, Stop looking for the souls that are already feeling fulfilled. Go to the lost sheep of the world who will need your help. And quickly, then I went back. What else do I do? Then I remembered Joshua. Joshua tells the Israelites, listen, we need to repent. We need to change. And these are the ways of the Lord. But he says, even though, even if we do not, you do not repent, Joshua says, ask for me and my household. I began to get solutions. When I started journaling about my life, some of the things that have made me worried, the why is it that the financial situation is making me worried and taking away my anxiety, even though I believe that my freedom is in Christ? How? Quickly had to identify. And I realized I'm not surrendered. As much as I speak about surrender, freedom that is there on the cross, I am not living at the foot of the cross. And those are some of the things that now I've had to work on my heart and realize, how do I go at the foot of the cross? Is it about other people? It is never about other people. And that's what the book of Galatians, chapter you know, 6, verses 7 says, Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man only reaps what he sows. To him who sows to his flesh, from flesh will reap destruction. So I was so much in turmoil. Why? Because I began to depend on my flesh. I started doing one or two applications, looking at the companies with a profile who can possibly hire me, making, and I'm like, God, am I really depending on you? And so my resolution has been, and I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're going through, but my resolution as it is right now has been, I want to take time to pray and fast. I want to take time to pray and fast. I've also asked some of my friends, my brother friends and my wife, to fast with me. 
to see the book I'm writing. What is the way forward? I need a compu a laptop, you know, that my wife can use for editing. What is the way forward? I need finances for editing. What? And I need to pray and see God's face to show me the way forward into that which I want to do, including with employment, the company I work for. If the finances are so down that we need to now step down out and look, what is the way forward? Do you know that it's not a mistake? God knows exactly the way forward for each and every one of his children. And so the question, will I sow to my flesh or am I going to be sowing to my spirit? And that's a question, a difficult question I've had to ask myself this morning. Because those who sow to the flesh, what happens? Listening to the flesh, the flesh uh, reacting as this flesh so feels, and, 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 and uh, being anxious, being stressed. I said, I said, God, I just prayed, God, help me not to go through that, but to overcome. Because the Bible says, if we sow to the Spirit at the appropriate time, that it will be paid. It will be rewarded at the appropriate time. I pray that God will help me to get the appropriate time within which to seek his reward. Number two, I also looked at the book of Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2. God says, heaven is my throne and the world is my footstool. Who will make for me a house, a resting place to rest? Who has the capacity? Do you know? And then he says, listen, this is who I look for. And then he comes and explains, I look for that and I look for this individual with favor. He says, I look for an individual who is humble, number one. The number two who walks in step with the spirit and one who trembles at my word. And the moment I remember that says, God, show me your word so that I can tremble at the foot of your cross. Show me. And so I've chosen this morning indeed to go and to examine my life more and to pray for God because the heart is deep water. I might, I might think I know now what I need to do. I don't know. And that's why I also re equally request you for your prayers, for my life, for my heart, so that I can be able to discover precisely what I need to do. And as we fight in this world, the battle, it is said very well, we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the evil, spiritual, wicked forces, which none of us has the capacity to fight. Only Jesus Christ was conquered, and through him we can conquer. This what I've just mentioned at the last are the most difficult to implement when you're going through a situation. And so I pray that you'll pray for me, that God will make it clear what direction to take. Indeed, for my family, for me, as I move on, even with my professional life, as I move on. Thank you so much at kochowidi.org. Please visit our website. You can also visit our, our YouTube channel and subscribe. Subscribe. And uh, you never know that could be the source of income for some of us. God bless you. Thank you.